Hi there ladies and gents, uh, welcome to the Techno Garage Services channel. Uh, my name's Rob Drinkwater, uh, hope you're all doing okay. Now just to just sort of put this in perspective as to, to why I'm offering this and why I'm doing this. Um, I've been playing about with Bosch KTS systems for about 20 years or so now, a little bit, been, a little bit longer in actual fact, uh, back to the very early days of KTS. Um, I actually remember the, the earliest model, the KTS 300, uh, then the KTS 500 when it started to get really serious, proper PC based uh, laptop diagnostics. Uh, then the KTS 650 came along, then the KTS 670, and then all the der derivatives of uh, the 650 and the 670. They were the, the 520, the 550, then the 540 and the 570, and now the 560 and 590. Uh, if you're not familiar with where it is and the positioning of it, then um, I'll show you where to, to find that information shortly uh, on the KTS software. So we're plugged in now. What we should find is that <clears throat> when we plug the, the KTS in, we'll get a few clicking noises from it. And we should get the B light here flashing about once a second. That indicates that the uh, KTS is getting power supply from the diagnostic socket, which obviously is, is vital. When we start to get communication with the vehicle, we'll see that the A light will flash sporadically and that indicates that we're getting data from the diagnostic socket and therefore the ECU on the vehicle to the KTS. Just to explain what these other uh, connectors are on here, we've got a, a 15 volt or up to 15 volt uh, input here. So you get a cable comes with the KTS that allows you to plug it in the cigarette lighter. Obviously for vehicles that are non 16 pin, pre 16 pin vehicles, uh, there may not have been power in the socket like the old Fiat's and things like that. So you can plug it into the cigarette lighter to power the KTS up. Obviously over here, we've got the USB socket, which is for uh, updating and uh, using the, uh, the, the unit as a pass through unit or uh, if you want to hardwire it. And on the, on the other end, we have the connector that the the 16 pin connector goes on to. And then we've got four connections just here. Unless of course you've got a 540 or a 560, in which case you'll only have three connectors. And basically you've got channel one positive and negative for the uh, meter and oscilloscope. And then you've got channel two positive and then a common ground here. So if you're doing something that's floating ground, it's got to go through channel one. If you're doing something that's got a reference to earth, you can put it through channel two. So for instance, if you're doing a, an inductive sensor, you're going to need to be on channel one. And then if you're doing a, uh, a Hall effect sensor, for instance, you're going to, you can use that through channel two or channel one if you wanted to. But if you wanted to do, say, for instance, cam and crank at the same time, you can do, put a uh, crank sen inductive crank sensor on channel one and a Hall, a Hall effect uh, cam sensor on, uh, on channel two. So that's the, 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 the KTS module main, uh, mainly done. What you will find on the back here is you've got some clips that you can undo. And this contains a multiplexer. And this multiplexer here, I'm not going to pull it out while it's plugged into the, uh, into the power supply. But this multiplexer basically allows the, uh, the, the KTS to be modified uh, over the years. It hasn't needed to be at this point in time. But it means that if they need to change the way in which it communicates via the 16-pin the cable, they can do. Um, so that's the KTS module. Obviously, first things first, we've got to make sure that we now turn the uh, ignition on. So obviously on most cars where you've got a conventional key, that's dead easy. Just stick the key in and turn the ignition on, making sure that you've got your battery uh, support unit in place. Uh, if you've got a keyless car like this, you obviously want to just make sure that the key is in the car somewhere and you press the, the start stop button without pressing any of the pedals and that will allow the ignition to come on but won't actually start the car. So that now puts Oops, us in the position. That now puts us in a position. We will get a list down the left hand side here of all the systems on this particular vehicle that we've got detailed information on. Now, some vehicles will have a massive great list down here of, of lots of systems that we have detailed information on. Other vehicles may only have a handful. As you can see here on this Volvo, which isn't a German product at the end of the day. Um, we've got quite a few of the systems listed here with uh, detailed te technical information on it. I'm going to choose engine management because it tends to be the most popular. And when we click on engine management, we've got these uh, sort of choices here. Now, if it's a case that we've got a number of different engine management systems fitted on these vehicles over the years or a number of choices, perhaps different power outputs or whatever using different uh, ECUs, then those ECUs will be listed here. 
what we've got listed here is EDC 16 C31 version 2, which is the actual engine management ECU fitted on this vehicle. But we've also got air mass meter and lambda sensor. That's because we've got some technical information about the uh, HFM 6 uh, digital air mass meter that they use on this vehicle. And we've also got information on, on the LSU 4 broadband uh, lambda sensor that they use on this uh, particular, uh, particular vehicle. Uh, I'm not going to delve into those because obviously that's the kind of stuff you're going to delve into as and when you need it on particular vehicles. But what I am going to do is go into the engine management, the EDC 16 C31 version 2. So I highlight that and click continue. And it now gives me some choices here. I've got some service information to do with the removal and fitting of certain things, including the uh, CP pumps, the uh, common rail systems and so on some removal and fitting instructions, which we can just have a very quick look at here. <clears throat> and this is going to give you some uh, instructions about removing certain uh, certain parts and what test battery or the, the battery's not charging or whatever. So it's very easy to get caught out. And this is just taking you through a few sort of sensible things to go and check first before you actually go headlong into the most difficult problem that it could possibly be. And this is an important one here. Has the vehicle been remapped? Has it got a tuning box shoved on it? There's all sorts of things that can make a vehicle misbehave because it's not as it came out of the factory. So again, that's maybe some questions you've got to ask the customer as to whether it's had some uh, performance enhancements done on it. And basically, it's, it's not uh, as it was as standard. Once again, when we click continue and we end up back at the beginning at the main menu again. Moving on to testers and tools. This is a bit of sort of propaganda as well as other things, uh, whereby Bosch are telling you what you may need when you go and do your diagnostics on this vehicle. So not only the diagnostic tester, so if we go into that, it's telling you the, uh, the, the diagnostic testers that you might need. So that would be obviously the KTS, which you know we're already there. But it's also te telling you what else you might need. Things like uh, a tester set for piezo injectors, a, uh, a fuel low pressure circuit test kit for testing the, uh, the, the diesel fuel supply and so on. So you'll find that it's basically giving you some Bosch part numbers as well. So you can ring your supplier and say, oh, yes, I'd like a diesel set 3.1. And you can give them the part number if you so wish. Obviously, it's Bosch wanting you to buy their, uh, their test tools for obvious reasons. So once again, when we press continue, we end up back at the main menu. If we double click on system description, it now tells us a bit about the, the system on this vehicle. So in other words, it's confirming it's Volvo with EDC 16C31 V2. It will give you firing orders and that sort of thing. It will give you more information about individual sensors and diagnostic socket is like. So it confirms it's a 16 pin socket, of course and also the basic pin layouts of the socket that we're going to be using for diagnosing this vehicle. And then may give you specific information about where the, the socket actually is. And that, as you see here, is installation position of diagnostic connector. If I click just there, there is a diagram showing where the diagnostic connector actually is, is located. Now, just remember, this is a German tool. So if you're in a country where we, we drive on the left and we have right-hand drive vehicles, you may well have to transpose this to a, a mirror image in your own mind. Uh, of course, some vehicles, they retain the socket over on the other side of the vehicle, even though it's, uh, it's a right-hand drive vehicle. At the end of the day, uh, it just depends on the vehicle manufacturer's design. But you will generally find that KTS shows the, the diagram for a left-hand drive vehicle. They consider that's the predominantly uh, used side of the vehicle where the steering wheel is. There's only, you know, relatively few uh, territories actually have right-hand drive, such as the UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and, uh, you know, places like Malta and so on, um, and Japan, of course. Uh, whereas the rest of the world uses left-hand drive, so that's why they make the diagrams biased towards left-hand drive. Again, when we finish looking at that, click continue. Has it processed? Yes, it has. And we're back at our information about the diagnostic connector once again. 
So if I click continue, we end up back at our main menu again. And if I now click on reading fault memory and click continue, it gives us the ability to actually read the fault codes from within this software. Remember, we've already read the fault codes using diagnosis back here, but we can do it from in here if we so wish. So if we click the start button on the, uh, for, the, for the connection, it's coming up and telling me I've got no errors stored in this particular ECU at the moment. So if I click back, that's fine. I've got no errors stored. And if I click back again, I end up back where I was. Now, because I've done a fault code read, if I double click on the fault code table and there's no fault codes actually stored, it will actually show me the full fault code table. So as we can see here, click continue and it now brings up the page that contains engine speed. And once again, because I've got this little plug-in uh, button here, if I click the plug-in button, it will go and pull the from the engine management ECU the engine speed coming from the ECU. And if I click the little arrow there, it will jump it across over to here at what it was at that precise moment. And again, if you're looking at knowing what the idling speed is, if I click on that button there, it will now go and pick the same bit of information, but it's saying, OK, well, that's the idling speed. And if I jump that across, it now jumps across to here. Once again, if it's within the parameters, it's in green. If it's outside the parameters, then it will be in red. If I click continue, there's a second page here of, of stuff to look at. Yeah, so that gets into the, uh, the whole thing about uh, engine speed and so on. And if I click continue again, yes, I've processed that section and we go back to the list. And it puts a tick in the box for each of the uh, live data values that you've already looked at. If you can't find the, the, the live data value you want and you've got an idea what they might call it, you have got this search bar just here again that makes it so that you can search for a particular live data or actual value uh, within the, uh, the machine. So I'm not going to uh, dwell on actual values. You'll go and choose these as and when you want to look at individual actual values uh, along the way. If you want to look at multiple actual values on most vehicles up to eight actual values at once, you need to do it through the diagnosis software that we were looking at in the previous section. By clicking back, we end up back at the main menu. And our next section to look at is the actual, uh, sorry, 